I'm very privileged today to welcome our speaker and our program and our honoree, Dr. Philip Burgess from St. Luke's Episcopal Church. I've asked him to tell his story about how he started the Ecumenical Choir, how he bonded churches all over Salisbury and Rowan County together. He's done a fabulous job. He's a hard worker, and I'm proud to introduce him. Dr. Burgess, come on up and tell your story. Mayor Woodson, members of the city, Salisbury City Council, Salisbury City employees, <coughs> county commissioners, school board members, elected officials, and all honored guests. I am thrilled to be here today at this spirit luncheon to speak to the mission, ministry, and music of the Salisbury Ecumenical Choir. I placed music last because music is merely the vehicle that we as a choir use to further our mission and ministry. Our sole purpose being to break down barriers and build bridges between all people in our community. Building a community, one note, one measure, and one song at a time. At this time, however, I must ask, if there are any members of the ecumenical choir present or past here today, if you have ever sung with me, <laughs> would you please stand and remain standing to be recognized? If you have ever heard the Salisbury Ecumenical Choir in performance, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> if you have never sung with me or us, <laughs> or if you have never heard us, would you please stay seated, reach into your pocket, and write a check? <laughs> I want to thank uh, Ms. Falster for Growing Health Ministries for that wonderful little exercise. I mentioned monetary support because, well, music costs money. The Salisbury Ecumenical Choir receives no monetary support from any one source. Major support for this choir comes from community foundations uh, that support the grassroots mission of the choir. Additional funding comes from choir members themselves. A great deal of the music that we do is either donated or purchased at a significantly reduced price. Yes, indeed, big music publishers do have a heart when you start telling them of the ministry and mission of the choir. And of course, I do a little arm twisting of my own. <laughs> Although I am being honored today, I really want to give credit where credit is due. The choir members themselves deserve the praise. Without singers, conductors might as well be waving their arms in an open field. <laughs> the choir membership is drawn from over 30 churches throughout Salisbury and Rowan County. And this year we were honored with the addition of some residents of Rowan Helping Ministries, our homeless shelter here in Salisbury. Mayor Wil Woodson really wanted the entire ecumenical choir to sing, Today. However, if we had done so, there would be no room for you. <laughs> we will, however, at the conclusion of my part of the program, enjoy a medley of songs performed by Phyllis Parti and Rebecca Stinson. Anytime you hear those ladies perform, it is a blessing, it is a happy day, and it is church. <laughs> Additionally, there is one very special person not with us today that deserves the real credit for this choir's success, our former mayor, Susan Klutz. In 2001, Mayor Klutz and I began a conversation in the produce department of a local grocery store. <laughs> she told me of the impending Sister City Proclamation, soon to occur, and the visit of a large contingent of officials from Salisbury, England. She wondered if the parish choir of St. Luke's would perform a program in their honor. She wanted them to feel right at home in our historic parish church and show them the real Salisbury. Of course, I said yes. However, as I continued to shop the grocery aisles, 
I looked at the customers. There were Caucasian, African American, Hispanic, Asian, and people of all races, nationalities, and creeds. A cross-section of our population. Indeed, the food variety in the aisles also spoke to what I had just discovered, if not even to a greater extent. Nearing the end of my shopping excursion, I once again ran into Mayor Plutz in any Episcopalian's favorite part of the store. <laughs> the wine aisle. After suggesting to Mayor, Mayor Plutz that a bottle of Pinot Grigio might go better with the salmon than the Chardonnay she had selected, I told her of my observation. What we needed to create was a choir that was a true reflection of the city of Salisbury. The, the chapel at Catawba College was selected as the venue, and with the help of Phyllis Partee of Crown and Glory Lutheran and Pastor Goder of Cornerstone Church, a choir of 111 members was formed for the Sister City celebration. Music for the performance included traditional choral works, shape note hymns, African American spirituals, gospel and praise music sung in both English and Spanish. An amazing experience had occurred. Many of those in the chorus had never sung in a racially diverse choir, let alone in a group with such a wide variety of music. I remember being so proud of what we had accomplished with only one program, and I was flying high. My flight was short-lived, however, in that I was soon brought down to earth once again. My dear friend and school board member, Ms. K. Wright Norman, immediately walked up to me right as I was leaving the chapel, and she said, okay, so what are you going to do with us now? <laughs> what is our next step? We can't just stop. It seems that others felt the same. And a Christmas concert was quickly organized. That Christmas concert has now turned into an annual event, known affectionately as the Glory of Christmas. Over the past 11 years or so, the choir has given numerous performances. These performances have generally been at the invitation of groups with a similar outreach, outreach mission. For example, Rowan Helping Ministries, Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church, the Salisbury Human Relations Council, just to name a few. We have performed three times at the Martin Luther King Breakfast, which we would like to turn into the Martin Luther King Brunch, or maybe <laughs> And we have performed at Let's Get Connected Day. In 2011, the group was invited to perform with the Salisbury Symphony Orchestra at the Pops at the Post concert. The group was selected not only for their fine, wonderful choral sound, but also in recognition of their humanitarian efforts within our city. The choir holds minimal rehearsals in the weeks prior to any performance. And I use the word rehearsal very lightly, in that our rehearsals are more like church. Uh, Members began arriving at least 45 minutes ahead of schedule to talk with one another and chat. And if lucky, if they are lucky, I don't know, maybe Art Bolick will sing them some Willie Nelson tunes. <laughs> at the conclusion of the rehearsal, we have prayer time in which we all share our needs and our concerns. And prayer time can take a long, long time. Rehearsals are held all over the city with the help of my colleagues, Phyllis Partee, Rebecca Stinson, Ernestine Ingram, Kay Norman, Dr. Grant and Joanne Harrison, and Thelma Banks. Indeed, some of these rehearsals may have only a handful of persons at them, they may be just one-on-one -on -one with the conductor, but that is how you build a choir, and that is how you build community. One note, one measure, one song at a time. Many years ago, the book Everything 
I needed to know I learned in kindergarten was a bestseller. I thought to myself, obviously, the author has no grasp on reality. I have spent 10 years in college and graduate school. I have a PhD. What do kindergartners know of math, science, business, or how to make a living? It wasn't until I started working with the little children at Mother's Morning Out at St. Luke's Episcopal Church <coughs> that I realized the author was entirely correct. Have you ever observed a group of infants and toddlers? I mean really observed infants and toddlers. If you have, you will notice that Preston, Silongji, Carlos, and Terrell their mind is not concerned that the color of their skin is not the same. They just want to get that square peg in that round hole <laughs> or that little tiny train to stay on the track. As a preacher said to our congregation a few weeks ago, I will say to you now, friends, sometimes it is more important to unlearn than it is to learn. And truly, what we learned in kindergarten is indeed what is most important in life. And that is how to treat all people with dignity, decency, and respect. A few years ago, a CEO of a major 500 company shared the secret of his success with his stockholders and executives. Opening his coat, He held up a simple, colorful box, much like this one. Yes, the secret to his success was a box of crayons. Not the 128 color box, but the simple eight color box. He encouraged them daily to sit at their desk and doodle. Buy a coloring book if necessary. Observe that when the colors run together, they make a new color. And yes, it is okay to go outside of the lines. Because when we go outside of the lines, new ideas and new images emerge. Our world, our nation, and indeed our city of Salisbury is like this box of crayons. Every color is important. And no one color is more important than the other. Each color has something to add to the overall picture. Without green and yellow, there would be no blue. Without red and violet, there would be no purple. Wouldn't it be great, Mr. Manager, <laughs> if all the city employees were given a simple box of crayons? Imagine what would occur. <clears throat> On the grounds of Robert Schuller's church, the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, there stands a statue called the Flight to Egypt. It is an intricately carved, life-size depiction of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph making their way to Egypt to escape Herod. The face of Joseph is rugged. The face of Mary is inviting. The face of Jesus is a mirror. This is a deliberate choice on the sculptor's part. For when anyone looks at the face of Jesus, they see themselves. As a child, my family traveled extensively. Travel is a way to learn and experience other cultures and other ways of thinking. And I am grateful for the experience as it has helped me to grow. However, we really do not need to travel to learn about others. I am ashamed to admit that I have lived on my street for seven years and only know the persons in the house behind me and beside me. Sure, I wave at the neighbors, but I have never spoken with them. Salisbury is full of homes with porches. Porches, porches, small porches, big porches. Porches with lots of furniture 
furniture that no one ever uses. <laughs> when did we learn not to use our porches? Today, I invite you to reconnect with the child that exists in you. Grab your crayons. Grab your toys. Invite some friends over. Sit on your porch. Share your ideas, your hopes, and your dreams. Do not be afraid to color outside the lines or do things in ways that have never been done before. Learn that it is okay to unlearn. Before I conclude this afternoon, I want to again thank Mayor Woodson and the City Council for this recognition. I want to thank all the members of the Ecumenical Choir on whose behalf I accept it. And I want to thank the Reverend Wayne Hoagland, our Rector, our staff and our vestry of St. Luke's for allowing me the latitude to continue this important ministry. I want to thank God for giving me the gift of music and the desire to teach and inspire others. Shining. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light not our darkness that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be? Brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a jar or hides it under their bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. Thank you. In honor of his efforts for making a relationship across racial, denominational, and cultural divides, a beautiful gift of music for all the citizens of Salisbury, we do honor you this day, Dr. Burke. Thank you.